Hey everyone, Lavlock here, and we've got a plus 12 Azure Vault today. I'll go over my talents towards the end. It's not the build I was playing in the last video, though. It's a, uh, a Skybreaker's Fiery Demise build that I'm, that I'm using now, and this is probably the build that I'll, I'll be running with for, for a while. I picked this one because I'm, I'm doing 12s confidently now, for the most part. Some dungeons are way harder than other dungeons, but now I'm at the point where I can actually get to like 40 to 50k as Ellie with my gear, which is like 380... 380 right now um so i feel pretty confident and, I, and there's lots of like little gotchas that i've picked up on and a lot of the videos on youtube right now don't go over how to actually perform well they just say like what what actions they're currently taking but i found it very confusing how to determine like wh why are you doing that right now and how come when you do it it has so much more <laughs> effect than when i do it so here's here's the first key i did without an organized group so it's pug uh where i felt pretty pretty confident in it so we'll go over this uh kind of pull by pull and uh, I want to say the way that I've been able to actually perform consistently, decently well is by just knowing what my plan is on the way into into each encounter. So there's a couple of things that can happen with this dungeon, uh, depending on your tank. If your tank isn't great or is very scared or new, then what they'll do is they'll just pull these three and you have to be ready to just use your cooldowns on on just these three, because if they do that, then... They'll be doing that often, and you have to be able to use your cooldowns at some point anyway. With this build, cooldowns, uh, this build really focuses around always having your fire elemental out, uh, which means that you get a lot more flame shock damage, and more importantly to me, you don't have to refresh your flame shock uh, charges on them because they'll be at like 30 to 40 seconds usually um, with your with your flame shock out. It, du it doubles the length of your flame shock charges. So I've made some. Uh, changes to my UI to reflect this. Most importantly, this little widget over here that tracks the maximum duration and number of enemies that have flame shock, because this also takes primordial wave, and you want to make sure you have enough uh, charges of uh, flame shock out before you use your primordial wave. So with this one, I'll slow it down a little bit. Uh, what I'm thinking is, I'm pretty sure that we're going to go for the first three and the next four, so that's seven targets total. In this build, I play Molten Magma Totem, Liquid Magma Totem. Um, I think the build on Discord and Wowhead said that you should use the primal, like the, the buffed up version of the Fire Alley, but I found that, that the damage was actually comparable to this, and having Liquid Magma Totem means that you actually get like easier Flame Shocks out. Um, and and not having the time to set up your Flame Shocks will be like completely take your damage, usually. So uh, going into this, I've got one out on that first guy. Uh, I target the big guy for the Primordial Wave, which will put a Flame Shock on him, throw out Liquid Magma Totem, and I even pre-cast Stormkeeper in in the, uh, the starting area for the dungeon. So now I'm just like totally free to to get set up here. I'm doing some like bad stuff still. Um, you can see like I'm I set up my UI to track like Ascendance procs because I want to make sure that whenever I'm in Ascendance, I get at least like like one or two liquid, uh, whatever the the fire version of the chain, the chain lightning build. Uh, sorry, the fire version of the chain lightning talent or skill. Um, but once once you actually have like now you see over here, I'm pretty confident because I don't have to worry about flame shocks. Um, this build does take surge of power, so if I if I need to, I can add two flame shocks at once. Uh, if I do it after I do an earthquake, but I don't have to do that. Um, well, actually, maybe I do have to do that because now it's down to three. We'll see. We'll see if I do that. But um, there's a lot of CDR in this build, and the thing that you're always thinking about in this build. So there's the starter. We went over the starter, and during the core rotation, what you're always thinking about is like, what do you want to spend your surge of power proc on? Um, surge of power can do really, I think, mostly two things. Is what you'll do most commonly with surge of power. You'll you'll most commonly use Surge of Power on either uh, Lava Burst, which will give you back your your uh, Fire Ellie for the next pull. That's usually what I focus on first, is is getting back my Fire Ellie for the next pull. Or, if you need to, you can use it on Flame Shock to get two Flame Shocks out. You would only really do that if you have either a ton of mobs and some pooled up Maelstrom, uh, or you don't have Liquid Magma Totem available. But those are like the guiding principles of every single pull. So like as this pull is winding down, uh, what you're thinking about is um, farming back up some Maelstrom so you can start the next pull pretty effectively. So I've got 31. That's not a lot. I probably should have like farmed up a, a little bit more uh, Maelstrom here. Um, and then you're thinking like, 
Okay, do I have my fire rally? I probably should have done like one more lava burst on the one more empowered surge of power lava burst to get my fire rally back. But six is close enough. I, I have it right now anyway. Now I use uh, nature's swiftness on lightning, uh, chain lightning there, um, which I'm not going to do anymore. I'm actually not going to take uh, nature's swiftness anymore with with this build. I think it's really only worth doing with you have a, a build with elemental blast on it or something like that. But this this part is very dependent on the tank if you want to actually uh, perform uh, decently well. Uh, like sometimes what the tank will do is just like get three mobs, then do this one arcane tender at a time. And I honestly don't know how you can do well with <laughs> with that. Like you don't want to use any of these cooldowns on, on just like just one guy, you know, especially when you know that there's like three coming up. But but that is like the bread and butter is like you're you're always aiming every single pack to farm back your fire elemental, which just means that you're using your lava bursts after you do earthquake or earth shock, because then you get six seconds back if you're taking surge of power, which I will talk about the, uh, the talent builds at the end. Um, that, and once you have it back, you're thinking about like the setup, like going into the next pack, do I have liquid magma totem? Yes or no. Uh, do I have totemic recall to get it back? Like, yes or no. Uh, if I don't have either of those, then you're looking at just doing and it, oh yeah, there's a, there's a lot of mechanics here that just like totally screw you up, um, but but then you're looking at just like okay, well you'll have to actually probably use an empowered flame shock at the start of the pack and maybe maybe go for like a a three a three target primordial wave instead. Now when it comes to bosses, uh, bosses play a lot like uh, they used to play for enhance to me in Shadowlands with primal lava actuators. Like all I was ever thinking about with bosses was like, like are there ads? Like that's really all I care about because the the single target rotation for elemental is like really really simple. Like you really just like press the best button that you have access to at any point in time. So it's like you want to press lava burst if you can. Uh, if you get an ascendance proc, then you'll be able to spam lava burst for for a while. Um, but you do have to know how the encounters work. Like in, in this case, you see. I jumped over here. I thought I could maybe get three of these into this little circle, but I couldn't. Um, but with this one, uh, you get these tree... I don't know what these are, like icicle trees? I have no idea what these things are supposed to be. <laughs> but but you turn them into, into ads. So that means I wasn't going to spend my primordial wave at the start because the, the risk of not having it for the ad phase was too high. And on single target, primordial wave isn't like that much of a target boost, of a, of a damage boost. So I'm, I'm right now, I'm thinking like, okay... I'm going to have a lot of ads pretty soon. What I should what I should have done... I, I, so my flame shock is running out on the boss. I should have refreshed it before this phase. But now you can see we have all the ads. I'm looking to get flame shock on, on someone. I threw liquid magma totem out. So that now I only hit two of them. So that's bad for me too. Uh, sometimes it's hard to aim. I, I do at cursor for liquid magma totem, but maybe, maybe I shouldn't do it. Um, so I've got three up right now. Do I get four? Looks like I only do four. So that was, that was, I, I, I messed up there. <laughs> I should, I shouldn't do that. Uh, but now, I mean, that's better than nothing. Um, and what I have here is my storm keeper also saved for them. And you can see, I just like, I can burst up pretty high with that. And the key, the keys are in a weird spot right now because like the mechanics are very, very dangerous, but the, the mobs die really fast sometimes still so like it's like this weird mix of like key too high and key too low at the same time with our with our current gear but uh i send out my fire rally so i can start farming it back up again like fire rally i, I might hold fire rally in a longer in a higher key uh if i were to do this again because the mobs might live longer than a single flame shock charge a single unempowered flame shock charge but because like everything's dying so fast here so yeah i've got like i've got four out with with fire Ellie up, um, I actually do have a pretty long uh, duration on my flame shocks, but I, they're gonna die so fast that even if it were like you know a twenty second flame shock, they'd they'd die like they're already gone. So I don't need I can send fire Ellie on cooldown here for this boss, uh, just basically as a single target uh, cooldown and a convenience for for not having to press flame shock on the boss too many times. So not a huge deal, but you can see. Like, I was, like, you know, not first, then I was first, because I actually leveraged that that ad phase. Um, and the problem is, like, you know, sometimes you get other DPS that also want to leverage that ad phase. We do it benevolently, benevo benevolently, um, because we use the ads to get more haste. We don't just, like, destroy them, you know, at an instant. 
Um, we use them for more Maelstrom, which we can turn into single target as well. But but uh, some classes, like, you know, Windwalker, will just delete them all. We, we were not in each other's quaking there. That was really weird. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I think we skipped these two, which I actually like. I do like the skip. These guys are kind of slow and and inefficient. Um, they're kind of annoying, too, for, for the stuff that they do. Uh, and we got plenty of them that we're going to fight over here, too. I think these are the guys that put you to sleep for, like, 10 seconds. So uh, another thing that you should be thinking about in these dungeons is just, like, you know, as you're coming in, find the dangerous one. Put them on focus for your focus target kick, which you should which you should have. So this guy, for me, he puts me to sleep for 10 seconds, uh, which is obviously the worst thing in the world uh, if, you're, if you're a DPS player. So, okay, what do I have here? What I should be doing here, I got Stormkeeper up beforehand. I'll probably do Fire Ellie next then i'll probably send primordial wave in and then i'll probably liquid magma totem which I actually i didn't have to look at magma totem because i probably have my flame shock out at the same uh no we're good i can i can liquid magma totem so liquid magma yep and then i can lava burst to set off my primordial wave you probably should be delaying your you probably should be doing other things besides lava bursting right away uh you should probably wait to like maybe use your stormkeeper charges send out like an earthquake or something like that because you the odds are you will get like a uh, a surge of whatever whatever the the instant cast lava burst is you probably will get one of those and then it'll be faster to to see if you can actually trigger it but uh once you're in the core of the rotation i'm pretty sure you want to be spamming out all of your instant lava bursts because you're able to fish for uh for ascendance procs in that way but but uh but this is it's feeling pretty pretty good now it, it was actually pretty hard to perform well until I got, like, a, a decent weapon. I thought, like, you know, like, the gear shouldn't matter, like, too much. I should be able to be relatively close to people that were around my gear level, uh, based solely on item level, but but that wasn't the case. Going, going from, like, a, a 272 main hand offhand to a, sorry, a 372 main hand offhand to a 370, a 392 uh, staff actually gave me, like, a 6 or 7k DPS increase. So, uh, if you're feeling bad about your performance, like, don't judge it too harshly, because the, the, the gear actually does end up mattering a lot. And pugs? Pugs are so scared of this ethics. Like, they just, like, immediately clear it. It was, like, <laughs> really surprising. I thought that you would want to, like, you know, like, save it for a couple of seconds. At least a couple of seconds, right? To, uh, to clear. To, sorry, to, uh, to actually get some damage going, but... Uh, that was not the case. The pugs are, are extremely afraid of this affix, and they probably think it's like just like the meta to immediately clear it. Um, but here you can see ascendance proc, just leverage leverage it with the uh, the double lava burst. Sorry, the double lava beam. I think it's called lava beam. I still have no idea what that thing is called. One huge tip for this week. I'm glad that this was the first week. Uh, not only because now it's like done and out of the way for a long time, but I feel like it made me like a better player having to work around these things uh like it's kind of like good training for just like the mechanics in general because this like all these dungeons have like a ton of movement like mechanics and you have decent movement tools as as a shaman so i feel like quaking is going to make me a, a better player for next week um one thing i highly recommend is getting a quaking weak aura that tells you if your current cast that's pi by the way that's my first the first pi i got I don't know what this guy was waiting for, right? Like, who's he PIing? Not me. Um, uh, well, I totally forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I was saying there. Oh yeah, the, the quaking, the quaking weak aura. You want to get a quaking weak aura that will give you the quaking sound conditionally, only if the current quest would be like uh, not enough time. So like that makes quaking so much easier. Like you can just like see, I casted that right there. If I didn't have that weak aura. I would not have cast that lava burst because I would have assumed that it was too close to the actual quaking uh, time. But because I did, I got ascendance. Now I can just spam out all these lava bursts on this guy. Um, the other good thing about this build, uh, compared to at least the the electric build with with a uh, stormkeeper, double stormkeeper, or even even lightning rod, is that you have a lot more like mobility with this one. Like you don't have to do a casted elemental blast before your your earthquakes. Earthquake is instant cast. You have plenty of charges of uh of instant lava burst too, and they're actually worth pressing because any one of them you're basically just gambling each time. Well, well that time I got messed up. Um, you're gambling each time to see if you can like, you know, proc an ascendance, and people don't realize that there's more to ascendance than just like entering ascendance. Like, 
whenever you proc ascendance through through the uh through lava burst casts you do the initial like ascendance benefits as though you had ascendance so that means that you're going to send lava burst at every single flame shock target uh, and you're going to refresh your flame shock uh, durations on all your targets so if you have your your fire ellie up and you're just like like fishing for procs then you're just going to like do a lot of damage like by, by mistake on average like maybe it won't proc sometimes it doesn't proc right but but usually it procs decently well and if you have primordial wave you definitely have a higher chance of uh having everything proc i've been going back and forth oh this one should be a nice pull i thought that i was gonna i didn't expect this to happen so i wasn't uh yeah i only have like three flame shocks up i kind of messed up on this pull but this is like the one pull where the the boomkin was actually like <laughs> doing pretty well <laughs> so that was that was pretty fortunate so let's see. Okay, now I got two flame shocks back up. I'm trying to catch back up. I decide that I'm going to use. Do I do another flame shock? I should. Yeah, okay. So four. Uh, you know, not perfect, but. But, uh, you know, there was seven of them. It could have been. It could have been a really big pack. Um, luckily, the Boomkin, you know, took over for that. Yeah, this was like. He was not pulling that that tough or this aggressively the entire dungeon. So I didn't, I didn't think that that would actually happen. <laughs> um. A lot of roots here. I've been going back and forth with like what the best utility is in each dungeon. Uh, you know, like we do have a, a talent uh, that makes Ghost Wolf break roots, but it seems like that one's just never going to be really takeable compared to the other things around it. Um, there is instead of Gust of Wind, we can go with uh, you know our, our other movement ability, which does break roots. But Gust of Wind is so nice in a lot of situations, including this dungeon too, because that last boss, you uh. You can't move around on the last boss like you can you know every time you move around like you get like a, a movement speed debuff or something like that so having a gust of wind to just like shoot you forward into a certain spot ends up being really nice that and like going back and forth between like taking uh uh ancestral guidance or not like sometimes it feels really good sometimes i just don't have like you know good procs and it doesn't heal that much it's only 25 percent of like the healing that you do on three people so Sometimes it feels very impactful. With this build, you really want to take Totemic Recall. So it's hard to get Totemic Recall and Ancestral Guidance, especially because the opportunity cost at that point is going to be uh, your your Earth Ellie, your 2% Leech Avoidance buff, uh, and also Stone Skin you couldn't get if you, were doing, if you were doing that. I'm back and forth on Stone Skin too because it's only physical damage. It's not, it's not all AoE damage. So it's kind of like, you know, just like a a single target buff even though it's a party buff like there isn't there aren't a lot of times where you're taking big aoe physical damage as the whole party usually it's like a pounce or something you know like like a couple like a couple of archer mobs are just like uh like spraying you know randomly into the group or something like that but but uh i think i think this part at this at this point in the dungeon i'm feeling pretty good about uh what's happening i feel like i'm pretty like like safely in the lead but we don't end up uh timing this because we wipe on the last boss because the the tank has like some ui problem and he can't do a b-res but but that's fine um i wanted to pick this one over my my dedicated group runs because it's harder to do well in these pug dungeons than it is to do when like you know you can communicate with the tank and you know which pull is going up that's another another pi let's see so i have i have a decent value out of my primordial wave, stormkeeper, uh, and then there's a proc. So there you go. Now, now I can get some lava beams out. Two and three targets I find are like a little, a little awkward. Like you really have to like be really on top of, on your on, like you need to be on top of your plan for like what you're going to be doing on the pack. There's like no dilly dallying at all. Like with two and three targets, like you have to just like, <laughs> like commit to like you know if you're going to use liquid magma, then you got to use it like right away, uh, and you're not going to burst anywhere near as high as like. Like, I, I can't beat really like rogues, for example, on two or three target packs. I can do pretty well though on uh I love five targets. <laughs> like like anything above like four four targets is like really nice. Um I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Uh this boss has a very similar very similar uh thought pattern to the previous, to the first boss. Uh the thing with this boss is there is an ad phase. So you have to judge, you know, when do you use your primordial wave? Um, so we lust here, 
I use it right off the bat. I probably should not have used that Primordial Wave, looking back at this. I like doing these videos because I'm forced to, like, confront my bad choices about the dungeons that I run. Like, I thought, like, in hindsight that it felt pretty good, but, like, that was a mistake. Like, what, what did I get from using that Primordial Wave? I just got, like, an extra Lightning Bolt, basically, and 10% haste. But I could have gotten, like, double that if I just waited a few seconds. And, uh, even more, uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe I can... Okay, maybe it wasn't the right, maybe it wasn't the wrong choice because now I almost have it again and I can use it on this ad base. But this ad base is so hectic that it's so hard to like <laughs> actually do anything with this. Like I'm running away from swirlies and balls and quaking and thundering and I'm trying to like do all of this bullshit. And I didn't even use, I don't have, okay, so I did use my, my movement ability, so that's good. <laughs> but... There's like, there's just like so much stuff going on. Adding quaking to this makes this very, very difficult. So I don't know if it was right. Oh, big shroud. <laughs> I don't know if it was right to, to use primordial wave there, but clearly I'm second guessing it over here. Um, the next batch of big ads is coming up in in like six or seven seconds. So it looks like I'm just gonna hold, watch out for the kamehameha. Uh, we kill this guy, and then we should have our another ad phase. At which point. I will be probably using Liquid Magma Totem because uh, the first thing I'm thinking about is like, okay, how do I get the best primordial wave I can get? Well, I'm going to Liquid Magma Totem to apply it to two of them. Uh, let's see. Uh, so far, so I did I did a Flame Shock on one. I sent my primordial wave out. Oh, it looks like I only got two. So that was bad. Where did my Liquid Magma Totem go? Looks like it only got the boss. Yeah, maybe I should, I shouldn't, pr maybe I have to just like stop doing Liquid Magma Totem as a, uh, at Cursor Macro, because clearly it's like, I have to hit the things, you know, <laughs> otherwise, like the whole point is, uh, is gone. Luckily though, with these guys, that sucks, but with these guys, it's nice because a Chain Lightning, uh, they're like just perfectly spaced out enough that a Chain Lightning will actually get all of them at the same time, um, so that's pretty convenient. Uh, looks like our our druid is is dead. I think I think everyone dies here except for uh, me and the tank at the end. And I've been going back and forth about getting Earth Ellie, but the way I see Earth Ellie is you get five percent uh, damage reduced. I, I well I do at least because I take that that talent in the Ellie tree, and you also get fifteen percent health, and you can save some like some pulls that are doomed so uh so far I've, I've been going with with uh with that oh man why did i i really messed up <laughs> uh only only three and these two are back here chilling and and yeah so okay i i have a lot that i can improve on on this one. Oh, and i hit by the ball <laughs> the healer did a, did a pretty good job here though especially because i'm like nowhere near him i don't even know how he's healing me he is, he is, uh, I'm so far from him. Oh, he's, uh, oh, never mind. He is near me. He's just dead. <laughs> I guess that doesn't count for, for being close. But you can see this hectic nightmare uh, is it's, it's almost over. Uh, now, now I'm just sending everything because, like, I decide, like, ads, no more ads. Like, ignore them. We have to kill him or, or we die. So ignore all the ads. Use all your cooldowns, even if it's, like, inefficient. Um, one thing I'd like is, I was also going back and forth between being an elemental shaman and a arcane mage, but this week convinced me like I just I don't have the I don't have it in me to be an arcane mage in this expansion with uh with these dungeon mechanics like it, it would be so frustrating like just like always just getting completely cucked over and over again and then the the cost of of being cucked as a as an arcane mage is all of your all of your damage right. Like, it's way worse as an Arcane Mage than anything else. Especially, and it's Quaking Week, too. Like, oh my god. Arcane Mages should be, like, really upset this week. Uh, let's see. This next part is kind of annoying. Um, because the frogs just jump, like, all over the place. So, uh, but the same principle holds. Like, like okay, I have Liquid Magma Totem up. And I have Primordial Wave. Uh, I'm gonna go for at least, at least five. At least five Flame Shock targets. With my fire, Ellie is not up yet, so I'm gonna have to act quickly on this one. Uh, one, my first flame shock target is running out. I've got two. There's primordial wave. 
Oh, I've got six out. And I should use my instant cast and hopefully it procs. It doesn't proc. Well, it happens. Oh, I died. <laughs> that feels terrible. I don't know if my earthquake goes away if I die or not. I think it probably does, right? Yeah. The, my biggest problem before this dungeon, and even obviously in this dungeon, was like, it's so hard to live for me. Like, <laughs> I'm not used to being a caster. I've never been a caster, like seriously, in, in any like season. I was almost a Shadow Priest, but that, that lasted only like, you know, a week or so before, before they all died. We're actually pretty good at Split Cleave. Um, like between like lava burst, uh, going to flame shock targets and the range on uh, on chain lightning being like pretty generous. Yeah, you know, obviously you know that's too far. You know, there's a, a certain split that's too far, but but medium split cleave is actually like not too bad. Where other classes like you know couldn't reach them with like their you know spinning kicks or their blade flurries or whatever. Uh, this guy was just going crazy. Now I'm like, what? Like where where's the other tank? Like. <laughs> We've got four flame shocks out. Now I have my fire alley. I should just send my fire alley. Uh, I might even, you know, if I was going to do this again, I'd probably want to, like, totemic recall on this and send out another liquid magma totem just to get, like, a nine target, a nine target, uh, <laughs> um, lava burst out there. Like, that'd be nice. Then you get, like, 90% haste for, for a while. But now, now I have, like, nothing. Now they're all. Now I've got to like manually reapply things. So I didn't play that quite well. But I could do another one. And now we're back up to four. So at first, Surge of Power, I found it like very awkward to play. Because compared comparing this build to the one I was playing before, which was the Ascendance um, Fire build. Uh, the one where you actually don't take Skybreakers, but you take uh, you know, the Ascendance CDR or the Ascendance Extension talent. Um, the big difference here is like you can easily, you know, recover from uh from not having enough enough flame shocks out, but then you don't have like this play style where you just like spam earthquakes over and over again. Uh, but that's fine, you know. It makes it makes it nice and and uh, a bit more interesting. Well, I do like the other build. I can't imagine playing the other build now because, well, maybe I would play the other build in certain dungeons. Oh, he's gonna die. Um, I think I earth Ellie. Yeah, I earth Ellie just in case he died there, so I didn't immediately die. <laughs> maybe he could get like a. Uh, be res from the druid or something and, and we can save the bull uh i should have probably done better on this one looks like i'm not getting too lucky with procs but i mean maintaining at like 70 for these hectic pulls is like fine for now uh trying to compare like my damage to other people that i'm seeing in keys is is not super useful because like a lot of these people have like really really good gear at this point from just like you know uh having started raiding and and gaming so hard <laughs> like 380 i feel like oh that's that's pretty good but a lot of people are like like a decent bit higher than that right now uh so let's skip ahead this guy this guy's really really easy there's nothing really to talk about um for him it's like a really slow fight uh, basically it's like your group has to have some strategy for where you drop these things and it's basically it like you just drop them there like <laughs> like that's the whole fight right there the only thing i'll say here is you probably want to hold your cooldown like if you have uh, a flame elemental i'd probably hold him until like after this phase because this happens really really fast and after this first one like you have a decent runway for uh for you know doing whatever you know rotation you want or cooldowns for a decent bit so the next boss though is very difficult for me um we'll go down below and this guy is why i like the gust of wind talent um because you can get around pretty pretty well without having to take his he has like this aura that whenever you move you get like a damage debuff but if you stop moving for a while it clears so gust of wind just like you know you can get from point a to point b really fast and and uh you don't have to worry too much about like getting slowed. And since there's an ad phase, you have to kill the ads right away. Oh, we got lust and we got I should be using my fire Ellie. I'm probably holding my fire Ellie because I really want to make sure I kill the ads on the uh, ad phase there. Um He has a frontal. Don't get hit by the frontal. 
But when I think Arcane Eruption is probably the uh, the ad phase. I don't do a great job. Uh, yeah, because here it is. So do I? I think I just did Liquid Magma Totem, and it was perfectly in the middle of all of them, and none of them actually got a Flame Shock. So that tells me that I definitely should stop doing the at cursor macro for liquid magma totem because it's like that that i feel like that would have been perfect but the range on this thing must be a little small so that's a it's a good thing that i actually reviewed this um so now i only have two so i'm going to get these far ones over there it's nice to have at least one range in your in your party for this reason i think for that reason it won't be like a triple melee meta <laughs> at least like not you know outside of like the top like 0.01 percent this is bad like, she pushes you back into one, and then my Gust of Wind, which is the perfect boop distance, into the next one, which kills me. So, uh, we do wipe on this. We come back uh, afterwards, and we finish it successfully. And I end up with, like, 40, 40k. What would it have been? If I hadn't have... If I didn't die, it would have been around, like, 42k overall. So, um, obviously, the more single-target boss you do... The, the worst it gets. I can jump over really quick to to WoW and just walk through my current thinking with the uh, the talent build that I'm that I'm using. Um, that and with the utility that I'm that I'm going back and forth between picking and, and not picking on every dungeon. There actually is a lot of choice, which is which is uh makes it a lot more interesting than it was in the past to uh to like you know pick your loadout before a dungeon, but. This is what I was running on the right-hand side. This is exactly what I was running. Um, it's Skybreakers with Liquid Magma Totem and Surge of Power. Those are the main... Uh oh, and of course, uh, Primordial Wave and the and the line down to uh, Splintered Elements. Like these, I think those are like the key the key talents in this build. Everything else is kind of like um, somewhat somewhat flexible. Uh, all of these fire things, you have some choices like. Um, you probably actually could, uh, instead of taking Eye of the Storm, I pick Eye of the Storm now, but you could have, you probably could go Flash, Flash of Lightning, and that would give you CDR on, like, everything, like, uh, Ancestral Guidance and, uh, all of these, like, defensives get CDR whenever you cast a Lightning Bolt, so I, this actually is a plausible, a plausible pick. Um, it's not crazy, but I find that having either, um, Eye of the Storm or Searing Flames, but you can't easily get Searing Flames. Having one of these makes the rotation like a lot more natural because you don't have to do it lowers it from from like after an earthquake like you will probably have to do if you don't have either of these you definitely will have to do two lava bursts before you can do your next earthquake. Um, I find that like a little bit awkward. Like with one of these, like you can usually get away with like you know one basically just one. Uh, um, but. But uh, other than that, like this is the this, like nothing nothing uh, to go over here. Uh, th with this this talent over here, you might prefer to take. I, you probably will always want to take primordial bond because our self healing is is really really bad. Like it's uh, nothing like it is on enhance. So I think the five percent like with this build, you always have an elemental out basically all the time. So five percent all the time is like pretty pretty good, right? It's a uh, it's not terrible. Um, as for for this side of the tree, there is a lot of flexibility. Whether or not you take Ancestral Guidance, I think just depends on on the dungeon. Like you probably could like you probably could move these talents around. Like, do you really need the the reset on on the uh the totem, like the totem? Like you probably don't actually need that, but it is more damage and I find it like a lot more ergonomic if I if I have that. But um what you could do, like you could just like not run AG. Um you can take the boop up. I don't take the boop up by default anymore. I always used to, but but in practice, I'm not actually using it uh, on cooldown by any means. And especially this week, I'm like way outside of the of the pack, so I don't think that this is like worth. I don't think it's so good that you have to take it all the time. Like I'm I'm not getting consistent value out of it in in practice. But you could like move things around, like like you know, like maybe you can drop your leech and avoidance for stone skin for certain things, like. Um, sometimes, like, uh, with Poison Cleansing Totem, like, you will, you'll need to get, you probably should get Poison Cleansing Totem on Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. You probably have to give up a lot for it. Like, you'll need this, and, man, what else? <laughs> what else can I even 
not take for this thing. Uh, can I? Uh, there's got to be something in here that, <laughs> that that I cannot take. Uh, I'm not sure how I got to this before. I, I guess maybe uh, maybe you just don't take the boop. They have they have a. It, these are hard choices. You can you can just like not take the one minute CDR on your totem and make it a three minute cooldown in favor of getting poison cleansing. That wouldn't be the worst trade off that you can make. It would be three instead of two minutes. But if you get the poison on that Shadow Moon Burial Grounds uh, section towards the second to last boss, then like your whole team will die. So uh, there are some dungeons where I feel like you know you have to make certain sacrifices in, in damage in order to to help the group. Maybe not on the pug because you're selfish. I don't know. That's up to you. But <laughs> at least in your in your structured runs. So uh, it's feeling pretty good. Uh, this is my favorite build so far. I'll post, you know, probably other runs comparing the other builds. Um, in particular, the one where you don't take SFD, but you do take uh, further beyond. And probably another one with the lightning build. So uh, let me know how you guys are doing. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.